there's a lot of good happening. And that's the only reason that um, it's a little bit of a fight. And he said, hello, dear brother. Greetings in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm from Uganda, East Africa, brother. Hello, brother. Praise Jesus. That was his first message to me. And my message back to him was, hello, brother. Sorry for the delay. And how have you been lately? So I just wanted to share that with you guys because I wanted to show you where this all started. And ultimately, it started by just someone reaching out to me on Facebook and just greeting me. And then two weeks later, after creating a relationship, he asked me for some money because his family was in the middle of the lockdown in Uganda. And in May and June, in the month of May, it was really bad over there. It wasn't like us over here in America. You know, we can throw our feet up and go on, on vacation or whatever, go hide out in our houses. But over there in Uganda, things are completely different because it's a third world country. So, they, I mean, they literally eat day by day. They work day by day. So they don't have food in the refrigerator for the next seven days or for the next two weeks. They have food in their house for the next day. So when you have lockdown, people can't work. You guys know that. So he wasn't able to work. He was actually working and going to school to be a nurse and all that came to an end. And Nanitaza has a wife, he has a child that's less than three years old. What was he gonna do? So he was, you know, de desperate times, um, he required desperate measures. You know, so he saw a guy, you know, apparently he saw, you know, something in me, something that he wanted to, you know, he, he wanted to reach out to me to, to, to be friends. And, um, you know, after we created a good relationship, maybe he understood that, you know, I was also a Christ believing person. He said, hey, is there any way that you can give me 50 bucks? My family and I were really hungry. I don't have any more work. Brother, it's crazy over here. And anyways, I came to the guys and I said, there's something more here. He wants to go to school, he wants to be a nurse, he wants to have free hospitals throughout the entire world, especially for Christians. Something where they come in, first get prayed for, because sometimes that's all people need is some prayer, okay? Before they actually get into the medicine or surgery or whatever it may be. And I'm like, that is an amazing idea. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. And I, I just fell in love. We, we all fell in love with Niamh and everything that he's about, and he's on fire. I, I tell you what, there's no one that I know that's more on fire than this person. And uh, we, anyways, we all came together. We were able to purchase um, an apartment for Niamh And then um, we realized that he is truly a powerful minister of God. So he was ready to do ministry. So we, we were supporting him in any way that we can do that not the same experience for you and I to, to go and make a meal for someone. There's a lot of preparate, preparation involved um, just to get the supplies. Yes, brother, we are serving food, but it is raining. We are in the rain. It is raining, brother, but we are serving the children food. But we are in the rain, you see? It's just rain. Hey. He said, you know, he's like, whether I'm rich or poor, I'm going to serve the Lord. You know, if I have nothing, I'm going to serve him. And if I have everything, I'm still going to serve him. And um, that holds true. I mean, they started out a few months ago, sleeping on the floor, not having much of anything. And in the span of less than six months, they move into a new space. Um, they're able to start having fellowship at their house. They're able to start feeding hundreds and hundreds of kids outside. It's just so spiritually rich. You know, he's so spiritually rich and he is not afraid to share that wealth with as many people as he can. Brother, look what uh, Jenny is passing. We have passed on a wooden bridge. <laughs> He's fearing to cross on a wooden bridge, bro. Yeah, I'm excited to share a little bit more of the, the timeline with you all. It's it's pretty radical to think about, you know, everything that's happened, especially this year. 
Um, I don't want to emphasize on anything negative, but just looking back and seeing all the positive things that we were able to accomplish as a team and with friends and family, it's, it's just been a, an amazing experience. And above all, it's just made me have a new perspective on life. Um, it's given me a new, a new energy. It's given me a new passion. Um, and it's just helped me to be more motivated than ever before because, you know, there's other people out there in the, in the world who have needs um, that we kind of just take for granted. And uh, so what we want to do is just kind of walk you guys through the past couple of months. You know, it goes beyond the plugs and one of our biggest dreams and aspirations and one of the biggest things that's been on our hearts, you know, when first starting this is to number one, encourage people, but we wanted to get that message all over the globe and we had no idea, you know, what this would develop into. This ministry, it has changed our life. He has done us so well. We have, we have understood God and we thank the Lord for our first Yeah.